Hello crafters and welcome back to the Crafty Meraki YouTube channel. My name is Deepa from Designs by D and today I have some artistic fun to share with you. So this is a bit of a mixed media card. You can see I have watercolors and some um, some lunar paste here. So I want to go ahead and use these products to create this fun card. And really this is for anybody at any skill level. I'm really not doing anything too complicated. So here are the products I'm going to be using. The Lily Meraki Flora. You can see that there's three beautiful lilies with a large floral area, which is what I want to capture the color in this card. Um, you could use any floral die cut or dies that you have. I'm also going to be using the Gilded Greetings sets here. Now I'm showing you the hot foil plate and the die, but um, I am going to end up using the stamp version of that set. So um, you could use either. It's completely up to you. Now I'm also going to be using the supplemental products. I've got the Lunar Paste. This is the gold and this is what's going to give us those really nice gold accents. And then I'm also using these watercolor brushes from Altenew because I haven't used them yet and I just want to try them out. You could use any type of watercolors that you have on hand. Now I've got some watercolor cardstock. This is cold pressed so it's got a bit of a texture to it. And um, the reason we want to use the watercolor cardstock is because it holds a lot of the water and really just makes the vibrancy of your watercolor stand out. Now I've got one panel that I cut to a little bit smaller than an A2 side card base. So that's actually about um, five and like a little bit less than half and four and a quarter a little bit less than that. And now I've also got extra pieces of cardstock. So the extra pieces of cardstock are for cutting out all of those florals. You can see I cut out five of them. There are three, two of them I cut out twice. And then I've also got um, that panel that I cut, which is the background. Now I'm grabbing my all to new colors here. The colors that I'm going to be using are evening gray, dusk, midnight violet, and emerald. And then I'm also going to be using jet black from the actual watercolor pan set because I just don't have that in the brush markers. Now all I'm doing is adding some of that um, brush marker, the ink from the marker, to the die cut. And then I'm using a wet brush. So my brush has some water on it, just plain water and I'm moving the color around. So what I like to do is kind of just make sure that I've got the main color on the background. So it's going to be like a lighter purple with when it's kind of washed out with the water from the brush and then I'll deepen and darken the areas which I want a bit darker. And there's really no rhyme or reason to this. As I said, it's very abstract, it's watercolor and I'm not really, like you can see here, I'm kind of following the lines and kind of doing a bit of, um, like a bit of the lines that you kind of do if you Copic colored. But you can see once I add the water with the brush, it kind of blends that all out. All I really want to do is just add the color to the die cut here and deepen those areas where you can see the cuts in the center of the petals. So that's all I'm really doing. And as I do this, uh, you know, it's, it's completely up to you. You can darken the edges more rather than the center. It's totally what you want to make your die cuts look like. Just go with it. Just have some fun. If you really wanted, you could do some smooshing techniques with this. You don't have to actually paint the die cut. Now to move on to the next step, I dried these off because I wanted to add some splatter. Now I don't want to add water on water like wet to wet splatter because when you do that it kind of just dissipates and kind of melts into the rest of the color. I want it to kind of stand out so that's why I dried the background a bit. Now I'm going to move on and use the other two colors, the dusk and emerald. So I'll do two flowers in, in dusk and then one in emerald. And I'm using the exact same technique as I did with the purple. Now remember, in order to get your splatter to really stand out, you do want to dry those die cuts because, as I said, if you're putting the splatter wet on top of the wet die cut, it's just going to mix in and you're not going to see too much of it, especially because we're making these die cuts really dark. Like I really want the vibrancy of those watercolors in the flower petals. So you can see here, I'm really just, I'm adding, I'm using a droplet that's kind of just on the side there on my mat. And yes, a mat comes in handy or some if you have like a glass mat, that works as well. And in between each color, I am wiping up my background there so that I'm not kind of muddling and mixing the colors. So I'll set those aside to dry and move on to the emerald. Exact same technique here. You can see oh, how cool that was. It just kind of spread out there. And that's because I had already wet the die cut before adding the um, watercolor brush um, color to it. So always wet your die cut first. This just allows the color to spread out more and gives it like really nice look. So 
those five flowers, the floral portion is done. Now I want to do the stems and this is where I'm pulling in that jet black pen watercolor. And I'm starting off again with just washing, using a wash to kind of just add the black in a gray kind of tone, very light, light and toned with the water to the um, entire petal and stem portion. And then I'm going to come back with a darker black or a darker gray in this case, and then just darken portions of the leaves and the stem to create some variance and, and depth in having different tones of the color. Now again with this technique I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did with the floral portion. I will, I don't think I actually dried in between here because uh, the black that I'm using to splatter is really dark. So I just kind of splattered on top of not only the leaves but also the flower portion because it will kind of give a nice look. Um, we're really just going crazy with the black splatter today. So now for the background, you can see I just sprayed some water onto the panel just to wet it completely. And now I'm just taking some of the evening gray. So this is the evening gray brush watercolor brush marker. And I'm just adding it to the background. So again, I'm following the same technique, just adding more of a wash. You can see it's a really nice light gray. I just want to cover the entire panel with it and ensure that the entire panel is covered in some type of color and not completely white. Now I'll dry this a little bit. The, the te technique or the trick to drying your panels when they're wet like this is to not only heat the front but the back of it so that it kind of flattens a bit. Now I didn't dry it completely. It's still a little wet and you can see now I'm just smooshing now and then I'm spraying some more water on top to kind of spread out the color. And you can see it not only spreads out the color, but it softens it. So I dried it a little more and now I'm adding water on water splatter and you can see it blends like it sort of just, it, it expands and blends with the background. So that gives another layer of splatter. And now I'm gonna dry the panel completely and I'm gonna add splatter to the dry panel, which creates another level of color. So you're creating layers of color and splatter to create a nice background. So now I've grabbed my lunar paste and I'm just kind of swiping it along the edges of the panel. Now I've let the panel dry or I've dried it with my heat tool here. If you want it to flatten completely, you can just put it through your die cutting machine through the plates to flatten it up or leave it between books and do this once it's completely dry. And I am just swiping this lunar paste along the edges and it's just going to lighten up those edges, give it a nice bit of shine. It makes the vibrancy of these die cuts really stand out. And I think in the end, when you actually look at them, it gives them somewhat of a stained glass look. Because when you look at stained glass, it has a really vibrant center. And then you've got that outline piping of gold or black or something like that. So this really has that beautiful artistic look there. And as I said, I'm just, I'm going all around. I, I'm you could just put it right on the edges, but I do want more of the gold to kind of show on the top as well. So you can really see it uh, popping out there and shining. You don't have to be perfect in how you're putting this on. Kind of just like, you know, swipe it on here and there. The randomness is what gives it that beautiful artistic look. And that's what we're going for here. And you can see my hand is just getting covered. I mean, usually when it comes to art, you do have to get a little bit messy. So, you know, that lunar paste will wash right off with some soap and warm water. So don't worry about that. If you don't want to use your finger, you could use a brush and then wash the brush afterwards. And we're going to set those aside to dry. And as they're drying, we're going to go ahead and stamp out our sentiments. So this is the Gilded Greetings collection. There is a holiday collection that has holiday sentiments in it. We're using just the plain Gilded Greetings um, collection, I mean, set because it has generic greetings and we want to make a thank you card here. So I am just going to heat emboss this with some gold embossing powder here. And you can imagine I chose the gold to match with the gold accents that we just put onto those florals and to the background. So really, when you use this set, I absolutely love this, you're cutting out a bunch of sentiments. You're only going to use one out of maybe what, like 10 or 12 of these. So you can take the rest and set them aside. I like to have little containers. I keep chocolate boxes. So you know, the little lint boxes and things like that. And that's what I put these in. And then I just can come back to them when I'm making quick cards or tags or anything like that. So now I just have to line up the die. Now again, this is a one piece die which cuts, cuts out everything in one go, which I absolutely love. And now I have a whole bunch of sentiments that I can keep aside for later and use the one that I want here. Now I will explain my reason for going with the stamped embossed version here because 
I'm not using watercolor cardstock and I do kind of want to make those um, die cut sentiments match my background. So I'm just going to take um, a wet brush and I'm actually not dipping it in any more paint. It still has some of that gray on it, that jet black. Um, actually, wait, I lie. So I took a little bit of the marker there if I needed it and I'm just kind of adding it to the background so that it matches the background of our card. I didn't want the white to be too stark against the gray so I thought that this worked well. And the reason why I used the embossed version and the stamped version of this is because if I add a bit too much water with foiling it actually makes that foiling um, come off of the paper and I didn't want to risk that. So this uh, worked out better for me. So moving along here, I've got my panel, that background panel, and I'm adding some strong double-sided adhesive, and I'm going to attach it to my A2 size card base. Now I'm using the strong double-sided adhesive because my paper is a bit warped. I did not put it through my die cutting machine like I mentioned you could do to flatten it out, but if you do that, then you probably don't need the strong double-sided adhesive. So now that I've got this panel on my card base, I can kind of arrange my florals and my sentiment to kind of work for what I want for this card. So I really want these florals to kind of come out from the bottom left corner of this card and to have the sentiment on the top right corner. Now you can always make your cards unique to you. So I'm very big on using cards as inspiration rather than casing them. Because I mean, anybody can case a card, but to make the card unique to you, that takes just a little bit more thinking. And then no one can say you, you took it from here or you used it from there. It's completely yours. So play around with your floral arrangement. Maybe you want the florals coming from the bottom rather than the corner. Or maybe you want to make a wreath with them and put the sentiment in the center of the wreath. Like just change up the places where you put the die cuts and the sentiment. And now this card is completely and uniquely yours. So I'm just using some foam squares to adhere the actual floral and then I'm using a bit of liquid adhesive to stick down the stems and you can see they all kind of gather down there at the bottom. I've got some extra leaves from the stems that would have ended up being, you know, hanging off the edge of the card. So I'm actually going to cut those and use them on the actual portion of the card that uh, you can see where the florals are. So I'm not wasting anything much here, just a little bit of the stem. And now for the sentiment, you can see that adding that gray to the white background just helped it blend in a little bit more with the background and not stick out like a sore thumb. So I'm adding some more um, foam adhesive to this and attaching it to the card. Now, I did mention this is an artistic card with gold accents. We've got the lunar paste on the die cuts. We've got the... Um, We've got the gold embossing on the sentiment. And now here is my last bit of gold. I've got a gold metallic pen, a permanent marker here. And all I'm doing is kind of just going along the lines of where the stamen, so the little centers of the flowers would stick out because you can see it through the cuts on the die cut. So I really just wanted to highlight those with the gold marker. You don't have to do this. You could use a black marker, anything you have on hand, even a white one would look good. And now I'm using some of these, um, these beautiful iris gems. Um, again, all of the products that I've used in this video are found in the description below, so you can find everything there if you're looking for them. These gems are really nice because they're clear and they have an AB shine, so they shine all the colors of the rainbow and what they tend to do is pick up the colors that they're placed on so it's going to pick up those blues those greens those purples so i'm adding those and since the actual anther which is like the pollen portion of that uh, stamen they're like oval in shape and not round like these gems so on some of them i've kind of added two gems one a little bit larger than the other some of them i just added one uh, gem so it just kind of creates a little bit of variation in the gems that you're adding and a little bit more interest to your card and you can see here in the final card they sparkle so beautifully the gold accents look absolutely gorgeous and that's how this card came together so don't forget that lunar paste is really that key with the die cuts that make that gold kind of stand out and give it that beautiful artistic look. I hope that you guys have found this video informative and that you will try this technique. Um, as I mentioned, everything's in the description below and I hope you guys have a great weekend. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys later. Bye!